Hello and welcome to my new player guide. So you decided to try out video and now you're at a loss with how to gear up, what crystals to use, what artifacts to use and just in general like as in what you should be doing. First and foremost, just do what you enjoy. Like you're new to the game, explore it, have fun with it, try out new classes, figure out which one's for you and yeah, in general, like I said, just have fun with it. Just take it as it comes kind of thing. But yeah, if you've been playing for a few days or maybe even a few weeks and you're starting to settle in and you're like, well, I want to start making progress. And to be honest, I'm feeling at a loss of how I should gear up and whatnot. That's why I'm here to help you now. Right, before we get too far into this, I just want to make it crystal clear that I'm by no means claiming that this is the most efficient way to do it. However, this is what has worked for me coming back as a returning player. And that leads me to my next point. I came back to BDO in the beginning of this year, March roughly. And I would say I started to grind and like properly settle back into the game around April, maybe closer to even May. But yeah, to give you some background, I started playing BDO on its original release back in 2016. And I played the game very actively for at least a year, maybe even until 2018. But ever since then, when I quit back in 2018, it's always been I've come back for like a week or two and then it's been a repeat cycle. A few months break and then repeat. But yeah, now in 2023, I've been back for what, four or five months and I'm absolutely loving the game and I'm not quitting anytime soon. The reality is that over the years, BDO really became a game that I myself could be playing and that it doesn't just feel like an absolute chore to play all the time. But yeah, the TLDR is that over the years, BDO has really become an accessible game for the average player and actually playable rather than just being, you know, fun for the most geared people on the server. In terms of what content is accessible to everyone, you have gear cap mode wars, even sieges nowadays, which I would argue is one of the main selling points for BDO as they're probably the most fun you'll ever have PvPing in any game. So the fact that there are now gear capped options for these is absolutely huge in terms of accessibility for new players, right? On top of this, you have Arena of Soler, ranked 3v3 arena that comes around every so often. Now it hasn't been present for a while, but hopefully they're working towards it being around more often than it actually is. You also have the option of hopping on trial characters with equalized gear and dueling it out with other people in the battle arena. But yeah, that's only a handful of things that has improved over the years since BDO's release. As for now, I'd like to shift back to the focus of today's video, which is gearing and general new player advice that I have for you. So yeah, moving on to the Garmouth Planner. The Garmouth Planner I made comes in 33 steps to guide you throughout your journey of BDO. Now, that's not to say you can obviously stray away and do your own thing, but maybe you're a new player or you're a veteran player and you just need some advice or want a different perspective of how someone else would gear up. Me, myself, this is how I would do it. And like I said earlier, I by no means claim that this is the most efficient method, but if I were to redo it, which I will be doing when I start my NA account, um, then yeah, this is how I personally would gear up in video. As for this video, I'm not going to go through all the 33 steps individually. I'm just gonna do some general things and talk about them that I think are important. And if there are any other questions that appear for you that you come to think of, you're more than welcome to comment down below, or you can join the Discord and have a direct conversation with me there and I'll answer your questions as quick as I can. Right, so what should you as a new player be aiming to do post grinding when you've just finished your season? Personally, post what I've already mentioned in this guide as you'll see talking about the Magnus and some things in the notes which you can view here. Things to do post grinding is definitely the daily quest for Jatina, Land of the Morning Light quest line, Abyss 1, the Magnus and Adventure Journals. But yeah, most of these things are covered in the Garmouth Planner, but if there is something missing, let me know. Now, the Abyss and the Land of the Morning Light quest lines are things you can finish in a day or two if you play a lot. However, the adventure journals is something you're going to be doing over the course of a few weeks, I would say, due to some steps time gating you, but also because it will take some time to do them. And then you have the Datina daily that will take you 45 days of completing the daily until you finish it. So with that in mind, when you're not grinding, these are some nice side goals you can work on in the meantime. As far as guides for the adventure journals and all of these things go, I myself don't have any content on that and it's not something I do plan to make because it's already out there and it doesn't need to be recreated. So if you are looking for guides for those things, I highly suggest you check out Quendia and Chris Polly on YouTube. There might be more YouTubers out there with the content, but those are the ones I used to use myself. So I highly recommend you check them out. Right, quickly going to touch upon the crystals because I think it can be confusing and like there's tons of options. What should I use? I just set this up together and I think this is a decent setup to run. It's not too heavy of an investment. It's only 500 mil for the entire package and it's going to give you some bang for your buck. 
realistically later down the line you're going to want to change this however for now this will more than do the job what you're going to be running is four combined magic crystal macalots two crystal velka two bond magic crystal viper two accurate crystal two corrupted magic crystal one bong wangs fragment and one magic crystal of infinity power. It might not be the prettiest crystals I've ever seen, but these are gonna give you some solid bang for your buck before you wanna really like heavily invest into uh, crystals. The idea of this setup is to give you that little bit of extra AP and some accuracy so that you're not missing the mobs you're hitting. Another important aspect that I think is overlooked by many new players is the buffing aspect of the game. You might initially look at buffs and consumables as like, oh wow, this costs a lot of silver, I'm not going to be running this, I'm trying to grind to make silver. But don't be afraid and don't be scared because these buffs are game changers in terms of how much money you're going to be making per hour here and there, right? And they're also massive in PvP. So don't be afraid with the cost of consumables and buffs because they are absolutely massive and do determine how well you're going to do in your grind. And like I said, also in your PvP. I can't stress enough how important the right buffs and the right consumables are. When you take the combined effect of your crystals and buffs together, when you apply all of that, that might be the difference of you being able to grind a better spot or not. So do invest into your buffs and do invest into your crystals. Now, the buffs I would suggest running for when you're going to grind is your villa buff, all the three of the church buffs, simple cron meal, frenzy draw of corruption, and spirit perfume elixir. A big takeaway here is the spirit perfume elixir. It's going to help you regenerate your mana or whatever resource you have while you hit mobs, and it's going to be a game changer for you so you don't have to continuously sip on all of those mana potions when you're grinding. As for the frenzy draw of corruption, a good rule of thumb you can go by if you're reaching the AP cap of your grind spot, then you might want to consider Giant's Draw. This will up your damage, assuming you're still hitting the AP cap, but it's going to take away the HP on hit that Frenzy gives you, so therefore it might not be to your liking anyway, because it makes the spot a bit more intense if you're taking damage right. So do consider that you're probably going to have to pay more attention if you're taking a lot of damage at the grind spot you're at, if you're not running Frenzy. As an end game player or mid game player, you should be running all of these things. However, as a new player, the villa buff might not be as relevant to you because it's more of a chore than anything to get it. And it might not make that big of a difference until you actually reach spots where you kind of need that bit of extra AP, DP and HP, right? And the reason it is a chore is because you have to travel all the way out to Valencia, to Lohan's Villa, to buy the invitation, to then get your buffs and then go to the grind spot. So yeah, if you're a new player, ignore the villa buff for now. But if you have a tent from because you're a returning player or you already purchased it, then you should run Villa buff, then it's worth bothering with. Church buffs are very simple. You can find them in your main cities, such as Heidel, Velia, Calfion, and so on. Just go to your local priest and you can get them. As for the cron meal, the draw, and the perfume, you can buy that on the marketplace. I think I've more or less covered what I wanted to cover in this guide today. I hope it is of help for some of you, and I hope that you won't feel as overwhelmed with this game and what it has to offer. Within the near future, I'm also going to be dropping my PvE guide for Berserker, Succession that is, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already, check out my weekly series. I did skip last Friday because of, yeah, well, if you watched the most recent episode, you'll know why. But yeah, I do do that as well, so have a look at it. As I previously mentioned though, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to drop a comment down below, or if you want to directly ask me, then join my Discord, or if you just want to hang out, right? If you haven't already, check out my Twitch, you can find it down in the description, and make sure to follow me so you know when I'm live next. Either way, you'll be able to find the Garmouth link and all other relevant links in the description down below. That's going to be all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, peace.